I love history. History is like just kind of a repository of all the stories that we have told and that have been codified by the victors or whoever decides that their story is the one that becomes actualized. There's a city in Italy named Luca. This is a cool city. Is that it? No. There's also a song by Brand New called Luca, which is like one of my favorite songs by them. Is that it? Probably not either. I just, <laughs> then there was a girl that I used to see who curved me one time. Like a pseudo collective. It was like uh, me, like Josh Pan, uh, Y2K. You've had Y2K on here, yeah. Before, right? Yeah. Hi, this is Lauren Engel of Sidewalk Talk. I'm here with Luca Lush. Hello. <laughs> so we met back in 2014, was it? Yeah, I think so. I or think like it was in late late 2014. Yeah, really I think it was in was Philly the first time. Yeah, I think it was in Philly. It was. Uh... I'll put the group picture here. I remember there was a picture we were like sitting down in a circle, like on grass. I even I think it was like the day after the show. Yeah, the what was that? The on? moving castle thing. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, I remember. That's where I met uh... everyone. Yeah. A lot, a lot of, that was like my first internet to real life meetup. I remember I was talking to like Dirty Chocolate, yeah. Emmanuel online. He was like, oh yeah, you should come to this. And then it was cool. I, I hadn't been to like Philly before, I don't think. Oh. Then, so yeah. Um, yeah, it was nice. Nice so sweaty warehouse yeah. party. <laughs> yeah. So you were born in New York, like where in yeah, New York? Yeah, from Brooklyn or something. Oh. Yeah. Are your parents from there as well? Yep. Yeah, for well, no, my dad is from New Jersey. <laughs> my <laughs> mom is from further out here. in Long Island, <laughs> uh, but they have very thick accents. Yeah. And I've been trying to get rid of mine, but <laughs> if I drink, it definitely comes out. So. <laughs> what do they do? Uh, my dad's a, a retired Fed. <laughs> oh. My mom's a child psychiatrist. So. Where do you get your creative side from then? I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, I think, well, my brother's really, uh, he's a fantastic musician as well, but oh. he never really pursued it. But I remember, I kind of feel like he should be the one that's doing this <laughs> instead of me. Uh, when we were kids, uh, I remember he tabbed out the theme to Halo, like Halo 1, yeah. just on the piano by ear. Oh, wow. Just one day, like, I came home from school and he was like, yo, check this out. And I was like, damn. <laughs> That's dope. What does he do now then? Um, he is going to law school. Oh He's wow! Like two years younger than me, so he looks a lot older than me. Yeah. But, yeah. You were doing like drums at a young age, right? I played drums, but I wasn't that good. Yeah. I'll be honest. I taught myself, and um, it was it was mostly in, like punk and screamo and. Yeah, you were in like stuff. a few bands. Yeah, they were nothing serious. I actually, one of my buddies actually. Uh, from high school, he hit me up that I played in a band with, and I'm playing in D.C. at uh, oh, U Street soon. Yeah. And he was like, yo, dude, <laughs> can I snag a ticket to your show? And usually, <laughs> I mean, I, everyone's tweeted something like, oh, now you want to be friends with me. But this yeah. is like actually a kid that Yeah, I you're in the same with. band, so Yeah, I but I haven't talked to him in oh. eight, nine yeah. years. <laughs> like, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> like, sophomore, junior mm -hmm. of high school. So, yeah. Yeah. How do you describe yourself back then growing up? I was a herb. <laughs> I was, I, I, well, I mean, I just, uh, my parents were pretty strict, um, so I played a lot of video games. I was very nerdy. Um, I was really into music, though. Like, I loved going to, like, Warped Tour and stuff as soon oh. as I could convince my dad to let me go, because yeah. he was uh, always pissed off about the mosh pits. <laughs> he was so, like, you're, like break your neck in the pants. <laughs> <laughs> and once I did get knocked up but yeah um, so it was right. more like band stuff that you would go the oh it was, would go I, yeah i came up in very much a like a rock metal kind of background and i didn't really get into even like hip-hop until i think like 15 or 16 yeah. then i got really into it like all like you know tribe called quest like, pos who's like a bunch of these guys uh out of like minnesota and like atmosphere and a lot of like backpack rap too, like Sage Francis and stuff like that. Oh. Um, and then from there, we got into electronic music. I think the first two like big or three big albums that I really like got into was like Flying Lotus, Los Angeles, um, Nosage Thing, Drift, um, and Benga, Diary of an mm -hmm. Afro Warrior, which was like the popularization of UK dubstep. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I 
it just kind of like went yeah. in. Did people show you that or did you find it on the internet or something? I was big on a, <laughs> I wasn't big there in the community, but I was big into um, this torrent site community called mm -hmm. What CD. Oh. I think I can talk about it now that it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> and there were a bunch of these forums and it was just all like really, you know, big music nerds. And they had, dude, they had a huge repository of music. I was the coolest fucking, no, I wasn't cool at all, but <laughs> I had the best iPod. My iPod was stacked with like yeah. every, every like release, everything it was like, how do you get all, like all the full things? And I was just like, oh, just like, I have like friends and <laughs> but it was all like you uploaded. So you were you like the it. music god in school. Or did people I was know? just a nerd. I was like, I was the Anthony Fantano of my <laughs> Like I, I was that. just not that talented and hadn't put in the work to be like great at music or good at music or even competent, I would say. Mm -hmm. But I was just like very obsessed with like all of these random, especially kind of like under the radar, like mm -hmm. one off release kind of things. Um, like some screamo band would come out for like six months, have like one vinyl pressing. And I was like, this is amazing. Like, well, yeah, you got it all? Word. What? You collected it? I had a lot of vinyl, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of them are shit, though. They're still at my parents' house, so. Yeah. What kind of music were your parents playing in the house? Um, mostly, my dad just mostly put the Beatles on repeat. And my mom has, like, eh, pop taste. <laughs> so it wasn't like, it was kind of just me through the internet, I feel like, even at a young age. Like, I remember I was part of this, there was this game called Mech Warrior Online. <laughs> and my dad was into playing it, and, like, but during the day, he would let me play it. And there was like this big online, it was like an MSN community and there, there was all these clans and like, I was basically like, a, you know, like a nine year old kid playing with like 20, 25 year old people <laughs> on this thing. And a bunch of them were like, I remember that's how I found out about Lincoln Park because somebody in this clan like was like, yo, you should check these guys out. Mm -hmm. And that was like the first album I bought, I think oh. was Lincoln Park, uh, like, uh, what was it? It wasn't, I think it was Hybrid Theory. It wasn't Meteora. Yeah, but that was that was a great album. <laughs> that was a great album. Did you like school back then? Uh, I kind of just like cruised. Like, mm -hmm. I did well. Yeah. I didn't really put in like, I would just procrastinate. Yeah. Like, so. it just came easy to you, like studying. I mean, like I the guess, exam yeah. part. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't like I didn't find it difficult. Yeah. But uh, it Other, wasn't. Yeah. I was really into bio. I was oh. gonna go to school for uh, biology and genetics and that oh. all fascinated me what about it did it click to you initially oh i was just like yo this is dope this is like hacking the genome let's do it yeah. it's cool <laughs> and a uh, lot more work than i anticipated especially like initially um and i was just like fuck this like i don't i don't want to go through residencies and med school and all this stuff to get mm -hmm. to the point where i wanted to go which I guess I didn't want it bad enough, yeah. is what I'm saying. <laughs> like, but I guess your parents must have been so excited that you wanted to do... Oh, yeah, they're cool with that. Yeah. They're cool with, like, whatever, so long as I stay oh, really? out of trouble. They're, they're not picky about what you're doing for oh, your career. Oh, now? <laughs> now? For a while, when I was broke, they were like, you're an idiot. Go back to genetics. You should, yeah, you should go back to school. <laughs> like, it's always there. And I was just like, let me, like, let me stick it out a little longer. And now we're doing good. So yeah. Now, now my mom is like, I would say she's kind of proud. She's proud sometimes. And then, like, currently my dad's really ticked at me because I got a tattoo. Oh. And I put that off for so long. And then uh, I didn't even, like, I wasn't, like, super open about it. Yeah. But, like, they were on a cruise. And <laughs> my dad texted me. He's like, you're sinking deeper and deeper. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I love him. It was, like, I thought it was funny. And What is it? Oh, uh, it's, like, a, it's a sparrow Actually. on a petunia. On oh, a branch. I like that. It was like this uh, This guy, Eddie Bird, did it. I don't have a specific meaning for it. I yeah. know everyone's like, oh, this means blah, blah, blah. I was like, I just want something that is aesthetically pleasing and will remind me of the current point of my life that I'm in. Yeah. So then later it will have meaning based mm -hmm. around the context that I got it, not trying to craft something yeah. out of my ass. Are they religious? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was raised Roman Catholic. Oh. Uh, I am not religious, though. Yeah. But did you have to go to church? I went to an all boys Catholic high school. Oh. That sucked. <laughs> <laughs> that was, uh, eh. Yeah. But, uh, whatever. Are they still, like, super religious? That's why they're, like, kind of picky about what you do, like, how you look. Oh, dress. I don't know if that would, um, 
if that has like a strong correlation. Mm. I mean, they're good people. I love my parents, like, and they did they did a good job raising yeah. me. So like, you know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so where did you go to college initially? Um, I went to Columbia on the Upper West Side. Yeah. So. Yeah, that was fun. Good time. For, wait, you graduated or? Yeah, I finished. Oh, I, I okay. ended up with a, a BA in uh, political science and history there. Oh, I thought you were into biology. What? I was. I changed my mind. <laughs> like, I went to the job fair or whatever, and I went to the bio department, and I'm from, like, a middle-class family. Like, mm -hmm. we do okay. But I was taking out mad loans for school, like, quite a bit. Yeah. And so I went up to the head of the department or whatever, and I was like, hey, you know, I got five on this AP Chem, but on this blah, 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 whatever. But I did that because I knew that I could probably save some money, cut a class or two. So I was like, mm -hmm. okay, cool. And she was like, no, like 90% of the people coming to this program have blah, blah, blah. And I was like, she was really mean. Yeah. I didn't get a good impression of her. And she was like, yeah. And I guess it's like those kind of programs, they're trying to wean out people who aren't. <laughs> and then and they certainly out. weaned me out. Yeah, I was just like, ah, <laughs> oh, whatever. So I talked to somebody there who was like a head of the computer music department he was like yeah we should download some programs just do this blah blah <laughs> my uh my other my roommate at the time was really into making beats too and he was like using reason he was like oh you should try whatever and i had a windows computer at the time so i, I like got into fl studio i was like 17 oh okay and i'm 25 now yeah so i've been doing it eight years mm -hmm. first two years i really sucked I really <laughs> sucked. I was trying to be like Baths or Flying Lotus mm -hmm. or uh, Washed Out. So I was making like really chill wave kind of beats, like all kind of sample based. So I would take old, um, you know, instrumental like post rock records and stuff like that and throw mm -hmm. beats underneath them. And I guess the conceptually it was kind of interesting, but like I didn't know what I was doing mixing wise, engineering wise, compositionally. Mm -hmm. I was like learning music theory at the time, like on my own, because I only knew really like rhythm and stuff because I was always mm -hmm. playing drums. But actually, what about, why did you want to study political science? Oh, I just think it's really interesting. Yeah. I just, I just like, I love history. History is like just kind of a repository of all the stories that we have told and that have been codified by the victors or whoever decides that their story is the one that becomes mm -hmm. actualized. Um, and the politics is kind of how those stories come into action yeah. or come into being because of, you know, economic struggles, like just, I don't know, I'm, I'm doing a terrible job of explaining this, but um, I don't know, just, it's all fascinating to me and I think it, it does apply to really every field, like that's what everyone will bitch about is that, oh, I like this job but I hate the politics, and I hear that in music all the time too, but politics are really just a natural part of every mm -hmm. profession and excelling or not excelling in it, like everyone's like, yo, Tesla was dope, <laughs> and Tesla was indeed very dope, Yeah. but people you know, attribute a lot more success to Edison, mostly because he was a better businessman. He was a better mm -hmm. practitioner of certain um, somewhat questionable ethical practices that put him ahead yeah. of Tesla. And, you know, everyone's like, oh, light bulb, Edison. But now Tesla's got the car. Yeah. <laughs> well, named after him. Kind of, Thank yeah. You. Thank you, Elon. <laughs> so, I don't know. I enjoy all yeah. that stuff. Even now, I kind of read, keep up mm -hmm. on things. Um, but I don't really talk about that much in dance music yeah. <laughs> it's not really something that yeah um i'm sure that's just my personal yeah. interest that might not line up with maybe my fan base or things like that but i think it's good to diversify your portfolio of interests i don't know could you see yourself like in doing a career in that or was it just something that nah, like, you wanted to graduate and it was something that interested you i don't know if i'd be the best politician because i'm very stubborn and and like to do my own thing and I feel like being a good politician is being an aggregate of your constituents to a T and knowing exactly what they want, being able to act out that part. And, oh, I mean, maybe I could do it, but I feel like I would hate it. Mm -hmm. So, nah. So you knew all along that you wanted to do music. It was just like something to... Would you have gone to college if it wasn't for your parents? Uh, I feel like I grew up a lot in college. I learned a lot yeah. about, like, because I was, like, kind of sheltered and I didn't go out much and like towards the end of high school I was, you know I was drinking and, and partying mm -hmm. a bit and kind of got my feet wet with shit but um I really like grew up like the first two years of college I'd say mm -hmm. and so I don't know if I would be in as good of a position now if I hadn't maybe I should have chose a school that was more affordable because I'm still paying off my loans <laughs> like, oh, yeah. that stuff did you always go by Luca Lush or did you have a moniker before they were all trash let's not even talk about that <laughs> <laughs> there are a few they're all bad 
I, I didn't really know what I was doing uh, until Luca. Well, I, I mean, I was getting better. They were yeah. all kind of just experiments, you know. And once I kind of knew the sound I was going for at the time, which was before Future Bass was codified as Future Bass, mm -hmm. but it was like, I was like, oh, I kind of want to make stuff that's like Rusty and Porter and um, Tonight and, and all those kind of like uh, interests kind of thrown together, but like with a more melodic context, because I was kind of like flirting around with like the Moomatone scenes and things like that prior. And um, other than Dylan Francis, who kind of was just slowed down electro anyway and had those melodic tinges and lots of house influence and soul influence, um, along with the turn up, obviously. Yeah. But a lot of that other stuff was just straight turn up and like, I like to kind of have like a melodic context to even my heavy stuff that I do, and I've definitely gotten a lot heavier. It's kind of like come full circle almost. Mm -hmm. But um, that's why I kind of was like, yeah, let me like just start a whole new name and a whole new, yeah. whole new idea, and just kind of have like a, a broader picture for what I'm trying to do, trying to express instead of kind of just like just doing whatever at yeah. the time. What about your name? Or like, how did you come up with it? And why did you like it so much? You want to stick with it? You ever, like you ever heard of a Ouija board? Uh, I mean, I kind of, I feel like I should know this, right? Yeah, it's when you commune with the devil. <laughs> yeah, a little bored? No, I'm fucking kidding. <laughs> I, it was just an alliteration that I thought would describe my music. And I always liked the name Luca. There's, um, there's a city in Italy named Luca. This is a cool city. Is that it? No. There's also a song by Brand New called Luca, which is like one of my favorite songs by them. Is that it? Probably not either. I just, <laughs> then there was a girl that I used to see who curved me one time in high school. Oh, my friend told me that I, I would say something about something like this, and never mind. Uh, <laughs> but I like I rode a bike in the rain like nine miles to mm -hmm. see this girl. Yeah. Um, because she lived like further off on mm -hmm. like not by a train. That's or so romantic. Like, no, it was dumb. <laughs> it was very dumb. <laughs> oh my God. But she was seeing this other guy at the time. I didn't know, and his name was Luca. Oh. <laughs> It was cool though. <laughs> that like, was it. every time. I guess you don't really get remembered of him anymore. <laughs> no, but uh, uh, I am him now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, oh my god, that's too funny. <laughs> later on, like I, I dated her again briefly, so yeah. it all worked out. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and then what happened after you graduated college? Um, I worked at a bank very briefly, and it sucked a lot. You were doing like finance, like yeah, I was doing finance investment. Because um, it was like, what do I do with this degree that I have? Yeah. Um, and it's like, you can go into consulting, you can go into finance or things like that. And like, it was like a, a solid idea to pay off my degree and stuff. But I was like, very unhappy. Uh, I, I didn't like it. I did some marketing stuff too. I did like mm -hmm. a, a few internships at like different marketing companies. And I enjoyed that a lot more. And so I was like, why don't I just... I had some money saved up, obviously. Because mm -hmm. I, I know I've like tweeted about it before and people are like, oh God, don't... Don't quit your job, blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah. yeah, I mean, like, you shouldn't just straight up quit your job. But that didn't fit as much. This is for the extent of the characters. Yeah. <laughs> that didn't fit in that, in that one thing. So, yeah, I had a bit of money saved up. I had about maybe three or four months of rent saved up. And I was mm -hmm. like, I'm going to give this a shot. Maybe I should have had more saved up, to be honest. <laughs> um, I was living with my girlfriend at the time, who was now my best friend. Mm -hmm. Shouts out Jam Jam. Aww. She's great. Um, but, uh... Yeah, she like uh, she split the rent with me. I was living with her, and this was back it, in New York. Yeah, so. this back in New York. I think you met Jennifer. She's dope. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then I started getting a ton of inquiries and stuff, and it all kind of took off because I was like putting all my effort into it. Like, I wasn't going out much. I was just like taking a lot of Adderall and <laughs> just <laughs> for like twelve hours, just like learning music, writing music doing remixes, doing stuff, doing, reaching out for collabs, doing this, blah, blah. Yeah. And like, it was a lot of work. That's crazy, because even like doing finance, you have long hours, you have to overtime. Yeah, I was not sleeping a lot. Now I sleep a little more, which is <laughs> nice. But at the time, I was definitely, even in school, and then right after school, I wasn't sleeping a lot. Um, <laughs> you do what you gotta do. Yeah. Did you start suffer now so we can enjoy later. Yeah. How did you get our music out there initially? It was all SoundCloud. SoundCloud's yeah. pretty, basically it. Like the whole repost I, I, gang. <laughs> repost gang. It was like the <laughs> the little collective we had of um, like a pseudo collective. It was like uh, me, like Josh Pan, uh, Y2K. You've had Y2K on here, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, who else was in there? Harrison, Young Bay, um, Sogi, uh, Electric Mantis was in there. Akali came in a lot later. It was just like a big group chat that mm -hmm. we had that everyone would bounce ideas back and forth and like 
people would collab through there and people would send patches and sample packs mm -hmm. and a bunch of stuff. And it was like a really good creative community to have when it was like all my friends were on the internet basically. Yeah. And so like if I didn't have that, I don't know if I would have continued to have been motivated to do stuff. Mm -hmm. Because like, yeah, it's just nice to have just friends who like were going through the same stuff as you, like still struggling, still not making money through music at the time, not really touring yet. Well, well Nathan was already uh, mm -hmm. touring a bunch, but uh, the rest of us like were just like picking up management, picking up agents, stuff like that. But like uh, most of this, oh, Crane was in there too. Mm. Another Becky. I'm probably forgetting some people. Dirty Chocolate was in that one too. Um, but yeah, like most of those people are doing it professionally now, yeah. and like doing well for themselves, and it's like cool to see because everyone was like super motivated, and everyone always asked me, like, how do I get big? <laughs> I'm like, well, you just, it's not the point. It's kind of like being able to support yourself is really just all I wanted to do, like doing this because it's what makes me happy. Mm -hmm. But uh, having a community this is a big part, just like a small group of friends that you fuck with, that you think are going places, but that you also enjoy as people and get along with and can share ideas with. And I think also people that are like, like people in that group, some people are making like just, you know, future funk. I think Matto was in there too, was making like weird juke flavored. Yeah. I don't know. I don't even know what to describe his music still as, but it's, it's cool. And then, you know, Crane was, like, kind of more on the trap, future bass side before that. I was kind of in that lane. Josh Pan is Josh, Josh Pan. Pan. <laughs> He's, like, a bunch of... I have He's him on a new track, too. Me, me, Quix, and uh, we got Josh Pan to sing on it. It's, oh, it's going to be out I soon. I love his voice. It's That's great. so cool. He killed it, too. Yeah. Can't wait to... There's a screamo part on it, but we might take that out. Him screaming? I did it. <laughs> but, oh my god! But I don't know. I mean, if actually, gonna... you come from band, so I guess. Yeah, I did. I maybe. did a lot of the metal vocals and those yeah. things. Um, it was funny when we had this session. He's like, "Oh, you should." I was like, "We need this," because we had a like me and Quicks had uh, placeholder vocals in there. Yeah. Um, so one of them was like the whoop. There it is. That sample, yeah. which is like, that was like a top forty hit in like the '90s. So. Probably yeah. can't clear that sample. Like, <laughs> probably can't. Yeah. I want to uh, hear Josh Van scream, though. No, no, Josh was screaming. I he know, but singing. I want to him hear scream. Oh, yeah, I would love to hear him scream, too, but I don't want him to ruin his beautiful voice. <laughs> so. Oh, my uh, God. <laughs> but we'll probably not use that version just yeah. because, um, you know, like, I like it, but I know it, like, I've been trying to stop being so ADD with my tracks. Like, when I started, it was just, like... And I guess that's what people liked about it initially. It was kind of, like, just a, like a smattering of all these ideas thrown into one track. Like, because I couldn't... Just, I was just, like, yeah, I'm bored with this section, but I'm going to keep it, but I'm going to write another section, blah, blah, blah. It was, like, kind of cool, because, like, when I played it live, people thought that, you know, if they weren't familiar with me, that there was, like, all these different things, and it was, like, oh, just the same no, track the same. <laughs> like, yeah, that I wrote, like, tons of things into. <laughs> but then it also hurts it in the sense that um, people like repetition. People like choruses. People like um, it makes them feel comfortable knowing what's going. Like music is like defying and then, or sorry, it, it's uh, you know laying down expectations and then defying them in such a way that's interesting enough, but is not gonna throw people for a loop. Like they did some study where like they took like um, a classical piece and then they chopped up certain sections and repeated them mm -hmm. versus having it as a, a string of like non-repeating sections. And like um, most people liked the part uh, or the the version that had the repeating sections uh. over the other one. Now, personally, coming from like very metal and and kind of that, I was really into math rock specifically and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Terra Melos um, was a huge. I love Terra Melos. Um, the Mars Volta too. They have these long, meandering. It's almost like uh, you know prog rock kind of stuff. But like that's like when you're really intently listening to a piece. So most people you know, music is kind of like a background to their life. Mm -hmm. And it kind of like floats around or exists, or even in the club, like people want to, this sense of community, this sense of togetherness. And um, I don't know, basically what I'm trying to say is I've, I've come a long way, and I guess in my compositional tendencies from when I started. And nothing is particularly wrong, and, and like people who want to do one thing, they're totally like, you know, there is no right and wrong in this. That's the other thing. I'm not saying I'm better now than I was before. I'm just approaching things differently. Mm -hmm. What made you want to move to LA and what year was it? It was like December of 2015, so almost 16. So I've been here like two and a half years. When I came out here, it was dope. Like, uh, I, I ended up crashing on uh, Chad from Brownies and Lemonade's oh. couch for like a week while I found a place, bless his soul. 
Shouts out Chad. Yeah, I'm gonna interview uh, him soon. Yeah, I I'd like played a show with them and some other people and it was just cool because like I knew so many people out here already just from the internet. Mm -hmm. And I was like, damn, like and the weather. And there's so many cute girls. <laughs> So I was like, hell yeah. I mean, New York's, New York's great, great too. Uh, and I miss New York for a lot of different reasons. The transportation. Mm -hmm. um, I can't, I'm talking fast on this interview, but usually yeah. I have to slow it down. The walking, the, yeah. the talking, <laughs> um, the general vibe is like, uh, it's a lot of fake nice, it's a lot of bullshit. Mm -hmm. And um, I've definitely found myself holding my tongue in situations where maybe if I was in New York, I would just be like, you can go fuck yourself. Um, <laughs> which is probably for the best, though. Probably for the best. Um, but, yeah, mm -hmm. it was cool coming out here. It was very surreal, kind of like, it's like the American dream almost, like, to, like... Come from to, New York? Yeah, well, not, no, well, to come from New York, to, most people want to move to New York, I guess, because I grew up there, I was already like, yeah, ah, I, know, I know this city, and, um, you know, New York's great for, like, house and tech house yeah. and those kind of things, but the... You know, the, the base scene, for lack of a general term, was kind of not there. Mm -hmm. Like, I think D.C. has the biggest, basically, on, like, the East Coast for that kind of sound. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it was kind of like a, I should move out here. And, and I had management out here at the time, and my agent was out here at the time. Uh, they still are, mm -hmm. but different. I, I moved yeah. like, to a bigger team with uh, on Vital now. They're great. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Max. <laughs> and... Are you moving forward to do more like original oh. songs with vocalists? Or? Yes, uh, that's so. That's kind of been the pivot, and that's why I kind of haven't been releasing at such a breakneck pace as I used to, is because the original stuff takes a lot more time. And uh, I've sang on a few tracks. I'm not a great singer. I'm a good producer at this point, so I can make myself sound good. <laughs> but like, it's it's much more fun for me working with like very talented people who mm -hmm. like you know just come in and like. I think a great example, not not with the vocals, but like. Collaborating is so important. You just learn so much from people. Yeah. Um, but I remember when, uh, so Brass Tracks is also from New York and they're good friends of mine. Um, and uh, they live like not too far from me when I was, uh, I was living in Bushwick at the time. This was like after college or at the end of college. I don't know, it's all kind of blurry. Um, and uh, I ran into them at, like a party and they're like, oh yeah, like we live like over there. And I was like, oh, 10 minutes, cool. So we went over and we, you know, we made music together and just like, Ivan is so fucking insane on the keys. Yeah. He is amazing. I mean, obviously trumpet's his main swag, but what people don't know is he can slay the piano. Oh, like, <laughs> doesn't he do trumpet? Like, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. but he's just, um, like, we had this song that I was working on, and he was like, yo, let me lay down some chords that I think would be better. It's just, wow, amazing. Like, just one take. Mm -hmm. I was wow. like, wow. And uh, I just learned a lot from, like, kind of jazz theory stuff that I kind of was doing unintentionally, because... I just have a very basic grasp of like traditional music theory from studying it just by myself and then the rest is kind of just like things that I think sound good or I listen to other pieces and I tab it out myself and I'm like, oh, okay, this is what's going on and, like, in terms of, you know, borrowing chords or seventh, ninth, eleventh, blah, 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 all that crap. Um, Somebody on the comments will probably be like, oh, yeah, it's fuck you and your music. <laughs> you don't even know what you're talking about. You're right. No, <laughs> You're right. <laughs> but I know it sounds good, and I think that's really what's important. Yeah. And as long as you um, are fluid, like music is like a language. If you can speak fluently, it doesn't matter. Like, like people who learn whatever your first language is, before you learn any second language, like you don't know why things sound correct but you've been raised in it so you know what to say, how to say it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like, if somebody asked me to conjugate a verb in English, I would probably not know what to do. <laughs> but if they were like in Spanish, I'd be like, oh yeah, I can do that. How do you think your music has changed since the early songs you made? It's a lot heavier. It's a lot more, it's a lot more EDM. It's a lot more, uh, in, it was extremely influenced just by touring. So like, mm -hmm. I would see like, what worked with a live setting and what worked with the crowd and be like, oh, okay, like these sections work, these sections don't work, these other tracks I'm playing, why do these work? What gets a crowd hype? What, you know, but also, you know, that's not the whole thing. Influenced by crowd reactions or whatever, that should be coming from your soul. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but just in terms of, I guess, uh, I don't know. Making people happy, making people mm -hmm. dance. So like, uh, so my initial early stuff was frantic. Mm -hmm. abrasive, multi-sectional, 
and uh, I toned that down a lot. And then, uh, yeah, it used to be just like a lot more, I guess like the era of like hype them, hype them house, mm -hmm. you know, like tropical house, that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, I flirted with a lot of those sounds and a lot of people ask like, well, why don't you make like the pretty stuff anymore? And I do, I just haven't put it out in a while because I feel like, I don't know, I just need to have like, a, if I have like a whole album come out at once, mm -hmm. which probably I'm going to work on after this tour, yeah. then it will make more sense to have those pieces intertwined with it to give it a, a broader structure. But as individual songs that come out that are prettier um, or slower or just more thoughtful, um, you know, those are the things that people want to listen at home and headphones and stuff. And I think an album format is a lot better for that. As opposed to when you're releasing singles, those are like the things that you want to be the catchier things, the things that get people stuck or get stuck in people's heads, just that work on a dance floor. Mm -hmm. How do you think you've grown as a person since when you started? Uh, I'm less of an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nicer to people. Uh, I got. I think the biggest thing in that is uh, I, I got a cat. <laughs> I, I, and I wrote. Uh, there's uh, there's a song I have about Sasha. dedicated to your cat. Yeah, dedicated to my cat because uh, when I first moved to LA, uh, when I was living with Young Bay and Blackbird um, down on. Uh, that was the first place I lived. Oh, I'll tell you, that was funny. There's a funny line of that, too. Uh, anyway, I found this disgusting cat on the street who was missing a ton of fur, like, just patchy black cat, like, skinny as hell, very gross. Uh, I had been drinking, and I had some fish in the fridge, and I was like, cats like fish. So I left her a plate out of fish, let it heat it up, and she kept coming back all that week and trying to come into the house. And I was like, oh, you're gross, man. But okay. So I let her in, and I took her to the vet. Yeah. And uh, they were like, she was already spayed. She was like fine, she just was really malnourished. So she didn't have a chip, so I'm guessing somebody abandoned her or like mm -hmm. her owner died or something like that. So I was like, okay, you're my cat now. And uh, just taking care of her, I never had a pet growing up or like any sort of pets, you know. Oh, I guess my brother had a lizard. That was in a cage. Not <laughs> not really I, I mean, I guess if you have an iguana, iguanas are kind of cool, but <laughs> that didn't count. Um, but having like an animal to care for and I don't know, just kind of made me think about everything a little differently. Now I have two cats and two kittens, which that's, oh. that was an accident because I let another cat that was like in my garage, same kind of deal. And I was like, yeah, you can't come on in. They're just attracted to you. Like, yeah, they know, they know. Cat. I'm like, yeah, what's up? Um, her name is Spoon. I named her that because it is a stupid name and she is kind of rambunctious and stupid. <laughs> like, but I didn't know she was pregnant. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, I was like sitting. She like always sits in my lap while I'm working on music. And I like felt like moving. I was like, That's kind of I was like maybe she has worms. I took her to the top. They're like, oh, she's pregnant. And they were like, oh, it'll be like four weeks. I was like, okay, cool. I had a show in Vancouver like three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I went to Vancouver and then I came back and I couldn't find Spoon when I got home. And then I looked in like the bathroom. And she was in the litter box. I'm like, gross, man. Why are you, why are you laying down in that? And then I picked her up, and there's three kittens in there. I was like, wow, but why? <laughs> like, why in here? <laughs> One of them was dead, though. Oh. So that's the sad thing. But two yeah. of them, are, they're kicking. They're doing yeah. great. They're super cute. Now you're a dad with a whole, you're a grandpa. Well, I'm going to give away the kittens, oh. probably, yeah. <laughs> like, I can't have four cats in my house, so. But it's cool watching them grow up. It's dope. Yeah. It's really, it's the circle of life. Mm -hmm. It's fast. It's, it's great. It makes me happy. What would you say have been your biggest challenges? I, just getting started was huge. Like, mm -hmm. it was just like, I was broke all the time. I was eating a lot of ramen. I was eating a lot of taco carts. I still eat taco carts. Mm -hmm. I went vegan for four months. Don't recommend it. Felt exhausted. It's difficult eating with people. I did it to clear out my system. Mm -hmm. Don't regret that, but it's hard. Even in LA. Some people like, oh, it's easy. You get vegan. I just felt exhausted. Wasn't getting enough iron, whatever. Mm -hmm. and I wasn't trying to eat too much soy because, uh, it's bad if you eat too much soy mm -hmm. as a boy. A little bit's fine. Yeah. But like too much, it like totally fucks up your estrogen levels. Oh. Yeah. It's like. Didn't realize. Yeah. A warning to everyone. <laughs> Little soy is good. Too Back much soy. From Luca. Not so good. <laughs> Although I don't know. That's that's up for debate still. I suppose. I don't want to be blurting out scientific facts that aren't true. <laughs> I've been peer reviewed or whatever. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, just getting started. Yeah. Like that first like just like. The first 10,000 people to follow your music is like the hardest thing to do. And it's just like hard to stay motivated. And like, I remember when I got 
like a thousand plays on a track and I was like, yeah, I'm famous, mm -hmm. I'm amazing. <laughs> and then you just gotta keep chasing that high, but also like do it for the journey, not the destination. Cause that's whenever I've gotten kind of jaded or uh, feel disenchanted with the entire process. It's when I like look at it as a goal oriented thing instead of mm -hmm. a thing that it's like, well, I just enjoy making music. It's therapeutic for me, it's cathartic. If it wasn't, then why would I be doing this? Because you can have those like stupid goals and benchmarks in any profession. And if it doesn't have a creative impetus to it, then it kind of feels hollow, right? Mm -hmm. So that's when people are like, oh, I just want to get big. This is just a bad mentality I have. And we're all guilty of it from time to time. I'm not going to say I'm like, you know, perfect. But I try to remind myself all the time that it's like, it's fun. That's why you should do it. Mm -hmm. It's fun. Or it, like it gives you something that's, that's greater than the sum of its parts. So... What does love mean to you? <laughs> um, I, that's a tough question. Uh, I don't know. I feel like I've been loved a few times. It's just, you know, caring somebody, uh, caring about somebody as much as you care about yourself. Or, well, I guess, yeah, if you're depressed, you can't really be in love. So I guess oh my God. <laughs> well, people are going to be mad about that statement, too. No, you can. <laughs> but it's easier when you love yourself to love others. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like, I, don't know, I love my cats. Like I would, <laughs> mm -hmm. I would be devastated if something happened to them. Mm -hmm. uh, I would be in actual physical pain if something happened to me, I guess. So that's maybe a little different, but <laughs> um, no, I feel like I've been in love like four times, maybe five times. Mm -hmm. um, it's all been great experiences, I'd say. <laughs> Some of them ended a little not so good. So uh, pretty good. Yeah. So I don't know. I'd recommend it to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Last question: What do you want to be remembered for? Uh, I don't know. I, it's it's also insignificant on a grand timeline, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, our entire lives are but a blink of the eye uh, in the grand scheme of the cosmos. I know this is a cop out way to say that. Like, I don't know. I try not to think about that as much. I try to just do it now because I feel like if you have that like oh I have to be doing this to be remembered for something then they might get in the way of doing that something to begin with if that makes sense mm -hmm. so like you're not like living in the moment instead of like being too worried about the future or too worried about the shoulders of the people that you might be standing on and just kind of yeah just do yeah. your thing yeah I like that thank you so much no problem <laughs> bye guys